all gardeners in western Oregon and Washington face a common enemy, the slug. And in the life cycle of a slug, fall is the very best time to get them. Ivy and rocks give slugs safe sleeping quarters during daylight hours. They are ravenously hungry and do their damage at night. But here's the really important news about slugs. Kill one slug today in the fall, and you save yourself a lot of time in the spring. This one slug can lay hundreds of eggs. And so if you get this right now, you wipe out the entire family tree in the fall. Slug bait does the trick. The bait smells good, so slugs eat it and die. But so can animals. Newer slug baits, such as Sluggo, made with iron phosphate, won't hurt pets or children. When it comes to slugs, one bait is just as good as the next. But what's really important is where you put it. And here's where slug psychology comes in really handy. We put the slug bait all around the plant we're trying to save, and that's just plain bad slug strategy. Since the bait attracts the slugs, you're just inviting them to dinner. Come and get it. So contrary to popular opinion, do not put your slug bait around the plant. It just attracts them there. One slug takes the fall, makes a bridge for all the others to go over and eat your plant. Put the bait close to home where they'll eat it for breakfast. Get slugs where they live by baiting right next to the rocks and ivy. Bait all the dark, moist places they live. So put the slug bait near the hiding places, not around your plants. Now, I often think of a slug as no more than a stomach on a foot, but they're actually very smart. Did you know that slugs can see, hear, and remember? Who knew? See all these chewed leaves? The slime balls who ate here are capable of remembering this location for weeks. Yeah, slugs are icky, but they're also amazing. Experts have found out that they can remember up to two weeks where they had their last meal. So they keep on going back and back and back to that plant until it's gone. I can't even remember where my keys are overnight. And they can smell up to three feet away. So they follow their noses to our plants. And about their eyesight, apparently they can see, not very well, but they can see about six feet. How'd you like to be doing the researcher doing that study? So save yourself some time in the spring and save your plants too. Bait in the fall. And one more thing before we go. Don't put the slug bait out every single night. Do it about mm, every 10 days or every two weeks. And put it in different places. Switch it up a bit. Although we forget where we put the slug bait, the slug remembers. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. No matter how you cut it, pumpkins are just plain fun. If you think kids get excited about carving these orange orbs, you should try growing one. It is super easy, and it doesn't take a lot of work either. Your first step, pick one. The choices are mind-boggling. Squash come in so many fascinating shapes, colors, sizes, and some are so interesting it's hard to cut into them. So while the kids are getting their hands dirty, fishing out the innards from the inside of the pumpkin, ask them to save a seed or two. Sure, roast some seeds in the oven, 300 degrees for about 40 minutes till brown, but save a few for the garden too. This is all you need to grow a pumpkin, a pot, some compost from the garden store, and some seeds. You put in the compost, toss in some seeds now or in the spring, and they'll sprout when they're ready. Here's my pumpkin patch. The seeds were tossed in at this time last year and waited till this spring to sprout. I did nothing to help. And how exciting you're here to see the harvest of my very first pumpkins. Yeah, I've never grown them before. And here are a couple of other pumpkin tips for you. Nice. Try not to manhandle pumpkins by the top. Don't use the handle as a handle, okay? The top knot breaks off too easily and you want that. Now instead of carving the top off, cut pumpkins from the bottom. That way you don't burn yourself putting the candle inside. And I've got a tip to make cut pumpkins last even longer. Have you ever noticed how fast carved pumpkins start to rot and mold? We spend all the time carving them and then before you know it, the face melts almost overnight. All right, so there's no Botox for pumpkins, but we need to slow the aging process. How do you do that? Keep your pumpkin outside. It's cooler and the air acts as a refrigerant for your pumpkin. 
or get your pumpkin some face cream. Yeah, WD-40. It works as a preservative. Only adults should spray it inside pumpkins that will not be eaten. And yes, cover all the cut fleshy parts. You can get WD-40 at any home improvement store. The spray acts as a lubricant on exposed areas. It prevents mold spores from growing so quickly. Of course, let the spray dry before you put the pumpkin over the candle. You can carve it this year and grow it next year. Imagine how impressed everyone will be that you grew your own pumpkin. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Yellow leaves, brown stems. There are good reasons why you need to clean up dead plants in the fall and winter. Let's take some of the guesswork out of which plants need to be cut and which you can leave for the winter and why it needs to be done. This peony is gonna flop over and die. So cut off the leaves and stems of herbaceous peonies to prevent the possibility of botrytis. That's a plant virus that infects the new leaves in the spring, so this has to go. Same with the old tomato bushes and leftover veggies. The mummified fruit and vegetables are just a breeding ground for pathogens which winter over in the soil. After the first frost, this dahlia will look like slime. That's when you cut the stalk to within two inches of the ground. Leave it two weeks, then dig the dahlia, divide, or replant. Or you can leave it in the ground. Hostas are just begging you to take them out of their misery in the winter. Cut the leaves and stems to the ground. The slugs love to hide in there. Remove all the dead brown leaves from bearded iris. Remember bearded iris have leaves that are shaped like swords? There's a insect called the iris borer that will live over the winter in these dead leaves and then it'll be just waiting for the new leaves to come up in the spring. So we want to get rid of that now. Get rid of all the dead leaves. When lily stalks look like this, it's time to cut them to the ground. The leaves spent all summer soaking up the sun for next year's flower, but now it's spent. To keep butterfly bush from spreading seed, you can prune it hard. A foot or so from the ground, this will keep the bush from invading. There are some plants that I leave all winter long. I don't cut my roses back until early next March. I like the way the rose hips look. They're so brightly colored and they look great with a tinge of frost on them in the fall. The birds like to eat them as well. You need to pull off all the old leaves though, because that's a breeding ground for pathogens and be sure to pick up the leaves that are on the ground. You can also leave this sedum, Autumn Joy, alone. The seed heads look cool well into the winter and make a nice, really long-lasting arrangement. I've had this vase full of flowers for three weeks. If you still can't decide what to cut or what to leave, here's a good rule of thumb. If the leaves are yellow and the stalk is brown, cut it out. If the leaves are green, let it be. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon.